Right, okay, an overview of the layout of the, the River Bride, okay. So the River Bride rises in the townland of Ballycannon near Kerry Pike, and it flows in an easterly direction under the uh, N20, the Mallow Road, where it's joined by the Glenamore stream. And then it flows down through some uh, uh, floodplain area behind a hotel, uh, uh, through a little place called Fitz's Barine. There's a, an old stone bridge there. Uh, then it flows down through an industrial area uh, behind the Dulux complex and the, um, the, uh, the old um, Sunbeam uh, factory. And then it goes through the amenity park, the Blackpool Retail Park. And then it flows back under the N20 Blackpool Bypass, down through Orchard Court, into Blackpool Village, where it enters a culvert system highlighted here in red for over a kilometer where it eventually reaches the Lee, uh, flowing into the Lee under Christie Ring Bridge. So that's the basic rundown. Okay, I'm just gonna move on to the next slide. Okay. Here's Blackpool Village, okay, looking towards the city from over the River Bride, okay. Here we have the Old Commons Road, Brocklesby Street. Uh, this is the Orchard Court Estate here, and we have the River Bride here. And this area here is ground zero for flooding in Blackpool. There used to be a trash screen here, and this is frequently where the flooding would happen. And what would happen is the river would overtop here on the left bank. It would flow through this car park, through Wherelands Lane, and into Blackpool Village where it would settle here in the village. Okay, to give you an idea of the, the flooding in Blackpool, uh, over the last 20 years, we've had five serious flood events or five flood events, okay? In November, 2002, the village was flooded twice in the space of just one week. And after that, the culvert system running under um, Watercourse Road was replaced with a new updated system. We had, uh, everything was fine then for around uh, eight years. And then in January, 2010, the flood is starting, flooding started again. June, 2012, the village was badly flooded. Uh, the culvert system that had been replaced seven years earlier was completely overwhelmed. And the following year in March, we had another flood event, um, not as serious as 2012, but still uh, a lot of damage caused uh, to premises in Blackpool Village. Okay, so that's a picture taken. Uh, it's actually a still from a video clip shot at about five o'clock in the morning on the 28th of June, 2012, where Blackpool Village was completely flooded. Uh, the culvert system was overwhelmed uh, to a depth. The flooding was to a depth of 1.2 meters in the center of the village. And that is the following year on the 21st of March, 2013. And that was the last flood event in Blackpool Village. Uh, it hasn't flooded since. I took that picture myself, um, and that was in, on the evening of the 21st. All right, so what we now have is we have the River, Bli River Bride Flood Relief Scheme or the uh, River Bride Drainage Scheme. Uh, this is my own cartoon. It doesn't come from the official documentation. And just to give you a, an idea of, of uh, how I feel some of these flood schemes run, and you'll be pleased to see I have mitigation in there for the fish uh, included. Right, so these uh, photo montages are from the documentation for the Blackpool Flood Relief Scheme. Um, uh, just to give you an idea of the proposals, um, of course, they, they don't necessarily reflect uh, exactly how the scheme is gonna turn out, but it which should give you an idea. So these are the, um, the scheme's own uh, uh, drawings. So this is the, an open channel or a man-made channel next to the former Sunbeam site. Uh, this is what it currently looks like, or looked like when the photograph was taken, but it's pretty, it's pretty much still like that. So you have sediment settled on the sides of the channel and you now have vegetation growing there. So that is how it currently looks. And that is the proposal for that area. Uh, you have high walls, or well, walls to the, to the, to the, the river level there. Um, so that's that section. And now we move downstream a little bit, and this is the amenity park in the Blackpool, uh, at the Blackpool Retail Park. 
and it's a little green area. And those, some of you may know it well, it's, it's in a, on, a, on a summer's day, it's usually full of people eating their lunch. It's a nice little park, it's well maintained. And um, the River Bride actually flows behind this, um, these little bushes here, behind this railing. And what it does then is it flows between this building here and the uh, Blackpool Bypass, and then it leaves the uh, retail park via Colbert. So that's what it currently looks like. And that's the plan for that area. So you have a trash screen uh, to filter out debris. Uh, obviously you have a culvert system down below. So uh, this, the idea behind a trash screen like this is to filter out that debris such as rubbish, uh, trees, plants, uh, you know, stuff that is likely to cause damage or cause blockage further downstream. Okay, so an overview of what's planned for the uh, for Blackpool Village itself or for Orchard Court. I go back to the map looking down and this is the current, this red line here highlights the current uh, culvert arrangement from Blackpool to the Lee. And they're going to add, or well, the plan is to add 350 meters of new culverts to the existing culvert. Okay. So what does that look like from the from the air, okay? Because maps don't really give you a full picture. This picture is taken from over Blackpool Village, Brocklesby Street, looking towards the, uh, the Blackpool Shopping Center and the retail park. Then we have Orchard Court Estate here, and we have um, the Old Commons Road along here. And I actually live on the Old Commons Road, Brocklesby Street and Thomas Davis Street there on the right. And this here is, a, a little stretch of river I know extremely well. This is the River Bride as it flows down through Orchard Court into the Blackpool Bridge culvert here. And this whole section here is proposed for covering under the Blackpool Flood Relief Scheme into a box culvert. So it'll be gone basically. There will be no more river in Blackpool ri uh, Village as such. It'll be covered over. And a culvert is essentially taking the, uh, an open stretch of channel and putting it underground in a box culvert. That's what a box culvert looks like inside. This is the, uh, this is the Blackpool Bridge uh, uh, reinforced concrete culvert uh, looking upstream towards Orchard Court. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on in there as far as uh, growth or life is concerned. Uh, and it will be darker than this, I suppose, because we don't, we don't have the benefit of light. It, it, it disappears after you get a, a distance into the culvert system. Okay, so what does it look like from river level? Okay, so just to go back to show you exactly where I intend to move this from. Okay, I'll be starting this walkthrough from up this point at the northern point of uh, Orchard Court and walking down through here. Back in 2017, I took a series of pictures to, um, to, to show what, what the river looked like um, because I didn't know what was gonna happen. So I thought a record would be good. So, we move along. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And we walk down through the river and it's quite well covered at the northern end. Nice habitat. Then it starts to open up a little bit here. And if you look to the left on the banks, you'll see the remnants of Japanese knotweed. Now that Japanese knotweed was at one stage was, was a man height. It was, it was really, really, uh, completely inundated on the banks, but it's been treated by the, for the last five years and it's, it's under control now. And um, although it's a fairly uh, persistent plant, um, it looks like it's under control. So that there is the Orchard Court Vehicle Bridge. As we move further down, that is the Orchard Court Pedestrian Bridge there. That's the ground zero for flooding. There used to be a trash screen there. Okay, and that's the Blackpool Bridge culvert. Okay, so it flows into that culvert then it opens up for a small stretch in front of Blackpool Church, and then it enters the culvert system to the Lee. Okay, so this is what the photo montages from the Blackpool flood scheme show the area as looking like. So the river will be covered over and paved over, and uh, there'll be a, a public realm there instead. Okay, the bride is biodiverse. The river bride, um, in the past, uh, people have de described it to me, actually someone yesterday described me as stinking and disgusting from a few years ago. Bride is not like that anymore. Okay, the bride was a drain for industry for a long time. Some neighbors have told me about going to school and it'd be one color and coming back and it'd be another color. 
So it's bounced back and it's alive. And I'm gonna show that to you now. Okay, we have Heron in the bride. It's a regular visitor. Sometimes it'll be uh, foraging in the bride itself or perched up on a roof looking down at the bride. But it's a regular visitor in the bride. We have the Dipper. Okay, it's a rotund little bird. Uh, it's uh, um, called, it's, it's known as a, a bioindicator species because it is found in good quality water. So you'll regularly see these along the bride. I saw one this afternoon while I was out there. And this little bird uh, walks around under the, under the water using its wings to push its, to hold its body underwater while it forages under the stones. Okay, we have mallard. There's a few courting couples on the, the bride at the moment. Um, so we could see some uh, little ducks soon. Okay, there's not just life on top of the bride, there's life under the bride as well, under the gravel there. And I've been involved in a, in a number of kick sampling tests with uh, Cork Nature Network, did a couple of tests a few years ago. And this particular test here was, is with a friend of mine from Twitter, Ray, and we did a little test, uh, we did a little kick test on our own. So it involves kicking up the gravel and then catching the results in this very fine mesh net uh, and looking at them. And we came across all sorts of stuff, freshwater shrimp, mayfly nymph, caddisfly larva, stickleback. And well, we couldn't catch one of those, they were too fast. There was plenty of them in there. That's a brown trout. So there's lots of, uh, lots of life in the river. Um, a good place to spot fish if you're in the retail park, you, on a nice sunny day, you'll see a load of those. And there's, there's also kids fishing regularly for fish in the bride. Okay, um, we took, took a, a number of surveys with Cork Nature Network and I joined those surveys. Uh, I did those with Patty Steeman, was on the surveys as well. And um, we did a survey of the bride uh, to see what kind of otter activity was, was happening in the bride. There's Paddy there, I've labeled it so you, can, you know who he is. And that's Paddy taking a sprain sample from one of the bridges in Orchard Court. And we collect the sprain samples and they are used for testing. So they are frozen. And then when the, uh, the, time, the time is right, they are tested and you get all kinds of information from the DNA. But Paddy will talk about that kind of, uh, that in a little bit. And he is the expert, I am not. Uh, I've learned a fair bit from Paddy now uh, over the years. Okay, uh, we also did some camera trapping and you can do that uh, with uh, the red off the shelf camera traps or you can get yourself a professional photographer and we got very lucky and we got Tom Mason who came along to the bride and set up a number of very sophisticated camera setups with lights and uh, waterproof cameras and they would be left in position for a number of days and well, the results speak for themselves, really. That is a, a picture of a bride otter. Um, and uh, it's a fantastic picture. And if you look carefully here, you can see his little webbed feet. If you ever see an otter swimming, uh, it's quite amazing. The speed at which they can move underwater, thanks to those little webbed feet, something else, okay? His fur is extremely dense. And the, what happens is it, it, it traps air and that insulates the otter. And if you want to track an otter underwater and you want to be able to photograph it, the secret that I've learned is that you wash the bubbles because they're being squeezed out of the fur and you look upstream. So you will find whichever way he's swimming and you, you look upstream of that, you look upstream of where he's swimming or downstream, whichever way he's going, if you get what I mean. I hope that's clear. So that's one of the pictures we, uh, Tom got and that's another one there. And you can see that these, it's, it's unlikely that these people here have ever seen an otter or are aware that there is otter moving up and down behind their houses at night. But that's an otter sprinting on a rock. Uh, and this was taken along the bride as well. Amazing animals moving up and down the bride. Okay, let me just escape out of this quickly. Let's see where I am. Yeah, bear with me. Okay, this little clip here from the uh, Cork City Biodiversity Action Plan 2009-2014 describes that section of the bride uh, and the bride in general uh, really well. Even small patches of semi-natural habitat can form part of larger networks linked by rivers, streams, hedgerows, or tree lines. 
that are of major importance for both habitats and species. And that little stretch of the bride is a perfect corridor for wildlife. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt about that. Okay, what is the impact of the proposed scheme uh, on, uh, on wildlife? Okay, well, the impact on fisheries within the bride, um, even after compensatory measures, remains permanent, significant, and negative, okay? And despite the proposed mitigation, the impact on otters is permanent, significant, and negative. So uh, that's, that's from the um, environmental impact uh, statement um, on the on the Blackpool Flood Relief Scheme. So uh, it can't be any clearer than that. The, the scheme is devastating from that point of view. Okay, in that, uh, in that fisheries describes the, um, the culverting at Blackpool, the 350 meter section uh, like this. The 350 meter section in the vicinity of Orchard Court is existing, salmonid, existing viable salmonid habitat with an existing resident fish population. Should the proposal proceed, it would effectively result in the sterilization and permanent loss of approximately 350 meters of fisheries habitat. So it's effectively sterilizing that section of the river. Right, okay, I've shown you the nice stuff about the bride and I have to be clear and honest about the situation uh, on the bride in that area, okay? We have a terrible littering problem there, okay? Dumping uh, is a regular problem. Uh, I've been involved in cleanups myself and I've had help on those cleanups. And today I was delighted to see Cork City Council doing a cleanup as well. And the banks have been cleaned of all the litter, uh, which is brilliant. So if you wanna come and have a look at the bride in, in, in Blackpool, the Blackpool village, now is the time to have a look at it and you can see it in all its glory. And you might get lucky and see a kingfisher or a dipper. Uh, you'll be very lucky to see an otter because they rarely show themselves during the day in Blackpool. But uh, yeah, it's a nice little stretch and I'm and I very, very attached to it. Okay, what are the causes of flooding in Blackpool? We've heard all kinds of reasons over the years and you'll normally hear about the culverts being blocked. The real problem, as the way I see it, and I've spent some time looking at this, uh, the immediate cause of flooding in Blackpool are these things, these trash screens, okay? Now the trash screens that you see here, this is the trash screen at the, uh, the Orchard Court pedestrian bridge, which has since been removed. Um, these were regularly blocked. And you'll see there, if you look at this picture, the difference between the levels upstream and the level downstream, there's quite a drop. And the source of the blockage in this event is, is uh, largely vegetation, which mats together and firms, forms a, a perfect a block on the screen. So that, that screen there uh, was implicated in the 2010 and the 2013 flooding was blinded uh, by debris. Um, I think in one of the pictures, there was even a tire and a piece of tree, but you know, it gets blocked and then that's it. This is the trash screen further upstream at the, uh, the vehicle bridge that has also been removed. And this here is the largest of the screens since removed as well. This is at the Brothers Delaney culvert at the uh, Blackpool Retail Amenity Park. And this screen had a tendency to block, but it also had a tendency to cause water to build up behind it into the park, which was originally designed as a flood uh, attenuation lake. So this screen here is effectively creating a dam 450 meters above Blackpool Village. And after the flooding of 2012, this screen had been completely uh, pushed out of position. And I believe uh, from my own uh, observations that this screen uh, was um, responsible for most of the flooding in Blackpool Village on that early morning of June 2012 and is the reason why the culvert system replaced only seven years earlier was completely overwhelmed. So just to talk about that, to put the, the flooding in perspective in a timeline. So we had three flood events in succession in, within the space of four years, 2010, 2012, and 2013. The trash greens were all removed in 2014. There has been no flooding in Blackpool since then. It's eight years nearly to this month, I believe, since the last flood event in Blackpool. But that doesn't mean that the, the problem is over. There is still a problem in Blackpool because there is just too much water coming into Blackpool. 
um, uh, the trash screens just show that up because they block. And when there's so much water coming into Blackpool, uh, even a minor blockage can become a major problem very quickly. Now, you can't look at flooding in Blackpool without looking at the changes made immediately upstream to the River Bride in the years preceding the flooding. And between 1997 and 2000 and 2007, there are a number of changes made. The red circles here are river diversions or, or river reroutes. Okay, there was a, a, a major reroute here at the retail park. There was a, another reroute here earlier in the late 1990s to accommodate the Blackpool uh, bypass. There was a, the latest, one of the, the later uh, works to the bride uh, between 2005, 2004, 2005 and 2006, straightening, widening and deepening this section. And this section here, uh, part of the Orchard Court development um, in the late 1990s. The green highlights are bridges and culverts that were either replaced or new bridges and culverts. So you can see uh, a lot of work in the space of just 10 years uh, in uh, leading up to the flooding in Blackpool. Okay, what we want here is we want the best solution for Blackpool. We don't want no solution for Blackpool, we want the best solution. And if we look at all the options, the best option to my mind, uh, to our mind, I believe is upstream storage and slow the flow before it even reaches Blackpool. Now, it's not a new idea. It was actually first proposed to my knowledge in 1982 uh, in the Bryant Kiln Glen report. And um, it was uh, option two for the Blackpool flood relief scheme as well. It was one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest option, okay? So upstream storage is basically temporary storage uh, along the river uh, and uh, the water is attenuates for a period and then it flows into the bride in a controlled method or into the river in a controlled method uh, and preventing flooding. So that, in my opinion, is the best solution. But John may have some more to say about that. He is the expert. I am just a cartoonist and I would like to remind you all of that. That is my skill. But I do have some insight into this, having spent a while looking at it. So thank you very much for that. And I'd just like to say, we need your support. So all of, all of you out there watching, and um, we'd like you to spread the word about Save Our Bright Otters, because um, this is a very important, uh, uh, what we're trying to achieve here is, is important. We, we, we don't want this destructive scheme, um, and we believe there's a better way, but we do need your help because doing this kind of thing is expensive. So please spread the word. And if you can help, if you want to get involved, make contact and we'd be delighted to talk to you. And thank you very much. And I believe we are 